I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and part two of the dogfight battle between the Lumia 900 and the Samsung Focus 2 starts right now. Part two of a dogfight battle between the Focus 2 and the Lumia 900. Samsung, Nokia, both are 4G LTE devices. This one's $49.99, this one is $99.99. Yes, there are some minor spec differences. A 4.3 inch display here as opposed to a four inch display. Both are AMOLED displays. Both have 480 by 800 pixels but this one has a little bit of a larger display and a larger battery as well to handle that display, a 1,830 milliamp hour battery. You'll notice as well, and I didn't cover this in part one, volume rocker, power button, and camera shortcut button all on the right, nothing on the left. And then you get your uh, micro USB charging port, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, your micro SIM card slot, and then your speaker down here at the bottom. Before I get too far into this, let's give some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with Lumia 900s, Focus 2s, 1Xs, 1Ss, iPhone 4Ss, and more. That almost kind of rhymed. For use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we then turn around and give to you for free on the site if you play the game at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you won't deal with rebates. You'll walk out the door paying 50 bucks or 100 bucks at Best Buy Mobile. They'll also help you set your goodies up. So they'll help you set your phone up, get your contacts in there, your messaging, and more. Pretty cool and they help us pay our bills and give you free stuff. So special love to them at Best Buy Mobile. Let's get into this and take a look here. Internet Explorer, browsing capabilities, and this is one of those things I think is gonna be dependent on your use habits. If you're somebody that doesn't browse the web, browse the web rather, or brown the web, I guess, um, very often, I can't type and talk at the same time, phonedog.com, and we'll load it up, it's already loaded up over here. If you're somebody that browses occasionally, web browsing's not that important to you. I don't think it's gonna matter a lot because both of these offer great web browsing uh, experiences. Pinch to zoom is very responsive, still no flash support in Mango, which is Windows Phone 7.5. Transition effects are nice and smooth. Processor's exactly the same on both of these devices. Where the difference comes into play, if you do browse the web on a regular basis or you watch YouTube videos, I think you'll find the slightly larger display on the Lumia 900 to be really useful. So. You can uh, see the pinch to zoom equally responsive over here. And same setup, the uh, URL bars at the bottom. I can easily access tabs by pressing the three dots, which kind of corresponds to a right click and accessing it that way. So I can open up a new tab, and then when I'm ready to go back to Phone Dog, and you're always going to be ready to go back to Phone Dog because it's just an awesome page, right? That's a, a shameless plug in part two of a dogfight video. But pinch to zoom, very responsive. Portrait to landscape transition nice and fast because you don't have that flash. Everything's buttery smooth. It's a great web browsing experience, but you know, at least in terms of uh, overall feel, it goes slightly to the Lumia 900 just because of the larger display. I see that a lot when I, and I carry this phone for 30 days, but I see it a lot when I'm browsing the web or when I'm looking at a YouTube video, something like that. I do find uh, that extra screen real estate to be pretty useful in comparison to, uh, to this one in my tests. But you know, design-wise, both are great polycarbonate shell here. So when you scratch this, supposedly, and you'll see that I uh, kind of scuffed mine at like day four in the 30-day challenge. And you can see I actually dropped it on bricks, if I remember right, which I kind of uh, cried a little bit on the inside. But you can see scratched, but you still see that blue all the way through because it's a polycarbonate shell. It's not an actual paint job over the shell. So that's a nice little difference there. These are built well. This one has a little bit of an edge in terms of build quality with the polycarbonate shell, but you can see pressing and holding back. This will show you the multitasking options. And I, you know, a lot's been made about the multitasking. It's not my favorite uh, integration, but at least it's something and it's some option uh, on Windows Phone. So you can easily go back and it kind of shows you the cards where you left off. So I can go back to theme, for example, and it kind of starts that back up where I picked or where I left off rather. One little frustration that I have, and you know, a lot of people tend to call me out on this, but this is an issue that I don't particularly care for. I can say hi in a message, for example, and then I'll go and check a calendar appointment, whatever, you know, yada, yada, doing that. And then I come back to messaging and then I click on my message again and it's gone. What's sort of gone, if I press and hold back, actually I'll go back here. So we can press and hold back and hi should be in here somewhere. So there it is. So messaging and I can access it that way. It just weirds me out pressing the back button to go forward, at least in terms of notification. It just doesn't seem like the most uh, most accurate implementation of multitasking, but you do get that option in here. And again, it's a very fluid and well-crafted OS, but it's little things like that where I'm like, hey, you know what, for the next upgrade, they've got a few little tweaks that they need to work on, a few little personalization things and uh, and more. Otherwise, very, very decent application, or very, very decent mobile operating system. Now you can customize the outside here, and we're still kind of talking about a customization, but you can move this stuff around. But like I said in part one, you don't get a lot of control 
over squares versus rectangles. So for example, Hotmail messaging, I love to be able to see one message and I'd like to be able to see a preview, like for example with Calendar, I'd like to see a preview of who that message from. You know, John Doe and then it shows the subject line and then I have to click on the tile to go in. Unfortunately, you don't get an option to stretch these out and I think that comes from, uh, admittedly comes from our Android days where it's like we're used to resizing and moving widgets around and because we can't customize it, that means it's, uh, it's not as good. Not to say that, but that's one improvement that I'd like to see in a future version maybe Windows Phone 8 or something like that. Local Scout's a pretty useful tool here as well on the Lumia 900, and I'll show you this, and we'll allow Maps to use a location, and then from there we'll go into actual Maps, and I'll show you uh, some of the cool features on both of these devices. But you know, obviously my office is uptown, so I can come in here and say, okay, I'm hungry, what do I want? I want Hooters, Aria Tuscan Grill, Cutters, uh, Savannah Red, Chima, hey, Chima's pretty good actually, McCormick and Schmicks, which is also really good, BLT, which is all, this is just making me hungry, but you get the idea, I can see and do stuff, Speed Street's obviously uh, happening uptown right now. I don't know how live it is when it comes to that. I don't see Speed Street in here just yet. But actually, it starts tomorrow, so technically it shouldn't be uh, in here. They blocked off all the streets, but you don't care about that. Anyway, moving on to the review. Shop, I can see stuff like that. Highlights, I can see eat and drink and more. So this is really cool when I landed. I used this a lot during the 30 days where I, like, I land in a city, Seattle, for example, New York, whatever, and I was like, hey, you know what? I want something to eat or drink. What's nearby? And I can press that button or press that application and easily access that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, over there. Maps is on both of these devices. You get Bing Maps out of the box. And so you can see obviously Charlotte in the middle of uptown with 277 around. Pretty quick and easy thanks to that 4G LTE support which is pre which is available on both of these devices. Now down here you'll see some additional settings, scout directions. I can find me and then I can search and I can show traffic and things like that. So let's show traffic and see what traffic looks like. It's 6 o'clock. It shouldn't be too bad because our rush hour is typically between 4 to 4.30 to 5.30. But you can still see some uh, some delays here, yellow and then orange, and assuming terrible delays are probably uh, probably red, but you can kind of see there. Bing Maps is pretty useful. Bing Search is pretty decent as well. You can come in here and access something, and then you can see Scout, Music, Vision, and then Voice as well. So of course it shows Uptown, which is my location. We'll say Food, and I can search, and it'll bring up some local food, some images, some web and more. Same thing over here, but what I do like about the Nokia devices, they come with a couple of awesome, or they don't come with them installed, but you can download them through the marketplace. Nokia Drive and Nokia Maps. And let's see if it'll let me do Drive, actually, because I don't know. Let's go to, not Mokia, let's do Nokia. Nokia. There we go. I don't know if it'll show up or not. Yeah, because for whatever reason, the, uh, the Nokia store hasn't populated yet. But uh, Nokia Drive and Nokia Maps, Nokia Drive is a turn-by-turn -turn mapping option. And granted, you do get some basic stuff in Bing Maps, but it adds a nice look and feel to it. really gives it a, uh, I'll show you for example, you can, uh, you can hide your traffic, you can do directions as well through Bing Maps. So you do get the option on both devices, but I find Nokia Drive, thanks to the Navtech purchase that they made a couple of years back, to be a really useful tool. And you can download uh, Maps for use in offline mode as well. You just need a Wi-Fi connection to download those, if I remember correctly. But it's a great tool and it's free as well. So that's another, you know, you look at this and you think, okay, 100 bucks, it's 50 bucks more, but then when you start factoring in like AT&T Navigator for 10 bucks and things like that, you know, you may find the price to be a little bit more justified on the Lumia 900. Let's take a look at camera as well on both of these devices. Eight megapixel shooter here, five megapixel shooter here, and if I had to pick one thing that I've really been disappointed with on the Lumia 900, it's the camera. It's not a great camera. Despite having Carl Zeiss optics, it's really not my favorite camera in the world. I do love the setup of the uh, actual application. So obviously on both of these devices, physical camera buttons, and we'll load this one up and you can see the same look and feel here. I can either, well, let's take a picture just for sake of taking one really quickly. And you can see I can easily scroll between my gallery and then back to my live camera. Kind of get in, get out, and get back to work as Windows or Microsoft would uh, have you believe based on their ad campaign. But we can come over here. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll bring over this receipt and I'll take a quick picture and I'll show you what text looks like on this device. It's really hard to take text, you know, focused in. Let's do that. So you can kind of get a look at it. Not the best camera in the world. You can see even when zoomed in, you can see some grain around the uh, the actual text. And I had to pull the device out a certain way to actually get that much text. So we can see that in comparison to the Focus 2 over here. I'm gonna take that picture. Forgive me, there's some uh, tracking numbers over here. This one, on the other hand, takes a pretty decent picture. You can see clear, easy, te or easy to read the text, very clear, and I can scroll back to the live camera. So in the camera test, believe it or not, and this is proof that megapixels aren't everything, camera goes to the Focus 2. It's a winner in the camera department. That is one area where the Lumia 900 does not necessarily excel in. So both, you know, I think 
it's gonna be one of those things, depending on your price point, if you walk in with 50 or 75 bucks, this is a great smartphone. I mean, I really like the Focus 2, one of my favorites on at and It'd be a tough call between the Focus 2 and something like the Captivate Glide, which is a pretty decent little uh, low high-end Android device. That said, 100 bucks over here. The winner of the dogfight is the Nokia Lumia 900. It's a great all-around device. Yes, the camera sucks on this phone, unfortunately. It's not my favorite in the world, but there are a lot of great features. The polycarbonate shell, it's a really a premium quality smartphone. It feels like a $200 smartphone, but it's available for 100 bucks. It's got some great pre-installed applications, Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, and then you can download ESPN and CNN, a lot of stuff out of the Nokia store that I really think highly of. Focus 2, excellent smartphone as well. This is one of those ones where it's a little bit closer than most dogfights. If you got 50 bucks, I think you'd be happy with either one of these. I can be totally honest with you. I carried this one for 30 days. I would have no problem carrying either of these devices because both are LTE capable. Both have some awesome customizations. When it gets down into raw speed, they both perform about the same because they both have the same processor. They're just minor differences in the design and the camera. And obviously, the display is a little bit larger over here. I think the better bang for the buck is the Lumia 900, but for 50 bucks, man, you can't go wrong with this smartphone, uh, the Focus 2. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices, Focus 2 and Lumia 900, so keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Hit up our official smartphone rankings as well. Let us know which one you think is the best. This one continues to do well on both the People's Choice charts and the experts charts. If you're like, what in the heck is Aaron talking about? Has this guy lost his mind? Check it out. No, I have not lost my mind. Well, that's kind of debatable. But no, I have not lost my mind. Check it out. PhoneDog.com slash rankings. Hit me up on Twitter as well. PhoneDog underscore Aaron. And on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PhoneDogAB. Thanks for watching. Much more coverage to come with Windows Phone and with these two devices on PhoneDog.com. We'll see you next time.